Evo.com. It's been said that one of the key ways to outperform the competition is actually to simply outthink them. Certainly one of the cheapest ways of doing it. So is that the reason why, out of all the sectors of society, business is one of the ones that's embraced your ideas the most? When I wrote my first book, which is not about business at all, the business sector were the first to be interested in thinking. And that has been my experience. Business sector is more interested in thinking than any other sector of society. Because in business, uh, there's a bottom line, there's a real test. You can prove you're right in an argument, be bankrupt next week. Uh, there's an actual reality test. In other areas like politics, it's enough just to persuade people that you're right, and that's all you need to do. You don't really need to think very much. So it, it upsets a lot of people when I say that business is more interested in thinking than any other, any other sector of society. But it's true. Okay, and, and do you think that CEOs are spending enough time thinking about thinking? The answer is no. I remember talking to a major bank, and from what they said, they probably spent one day a year on what I might call creative thinking. All the rest was administrative, operational stuff. So the answer is no. People do not spend enough time deliberately on creative thinking, possibilities, opportunities, and so on. They do not, definitely do not. Mm. And do you think the internet has had a detrimental effect to thinking in...? Well, probably yes. What happens, for instance, with youngsters? You give them computers and access and internet, and they start to believe that you don't need to think, you just search for the answer. And, uh, and also there's the danger with the internet that you learn what everyone else is doing and you say if everyone else is doing it must be okay, rather like the credit crunch and the toxic mortgage assets, everyone else is doing it so it must be alright. There's been a lot of people who have benefited from your creative thinking workshop, so could I just be a little bit cheeky and just ask for you to give us the sort of two or three minutes on the fundamentals of getting good creative thinking within the organisation? The key point is that for 2,400 years we've done very little about thinking since what I call the GG3, the Greek gang of three, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle. Even worse than that, at the Renaissance, when Greek thinking came to Europe, people running schools, universities, thinking were church people. They didn't need creativity, they didn't need design, they didn't need perceptual thinking. All they needed was truth, logic and argument to prove heretics wrong. And that became the core of education, leaving out creativity, design and so on and so on. So the habits of thinking are very much concerned with judgment, not enough with design. How do we design the way forward? And design means using what we have to deliver the values we want almost totally absent from education at school or university. And so uh, executives and chief executives were brought up on that. They're very good at it. And when they get to chief executive role, they're still using it. But the other aspects, creativity, design, perceptual thinking, very key, which are not developed. So there's a need to deliberately make an effort to say we're going to spend one hour a day, one day a week, maybe one day a month, really sitting down and trying to generate new ideas. The other danger, which is growing and which is huge, people start to believe that information is enough. So they put all their information into their computer, computer analyzes it, that sets their strategy, makes their decisions. Very, very dangerous. And that's, I've seen that happen with major corporations worldwide. Because unless you can develop new ways of looking at the data, then you're trapped in the old concept and a computer will only apply your old concepts. There'll be some people thinking that, yes, actually, this is an area of weakness for us. We need to improve our creative thinking in our organisation. But how does a company go about actually practically doing that? Well, there's two sides. One, well, three sides. One is to take creativity seriously and to realise it's a skill which can be acquired and developed. The other is to uh, get some training for your people in it. And the third is to devote some time and some targets, saying, OK, here's some time, we want new ideas in this area, in this area, in this area. Because well, those three things are important. But people tend to think, oh, creative is just a magic gift, and uh, we'll try and employ creative people, and now, they, uh, now and then they'll have a crazy idea, and we'll listen to them, and that's enough. Do you think with the abundance in uh, business information that there is, that there could be a problem in that we'll have information overload and it will actually stifle an executive's ability to have clear creative thinking. The danger is in our 
logic culture, we don't have an expression which says excellent but not enough. And it's rather like uh, in a motor car, the rear left wheel may be excellent, nothing wrong with it at all, but it's not enough. So our existing thinking is excellent. Um, no way am I saying it's bad, but it's not enough. So people who've risen in their career and so on through excellence in existing thinking, information analysis, problem solving, logic, when they get to a senior position where it is necessary for them to do some additional thinking, their whole background and skill is in other thinking, logic development, information analysis. It's not their fault, but that's the way it is. What about forced idea generation? For example, uh, I've got a friend of mine that takes his team of 10 people, management team of 10 people, um, into the London Eye every month and gives them an impossible objective or goal or whatever. And each of them, left brain thinkers and right brain thinkers, have got to come up with at least 10 ideas before they can get off the London Eye. And if they don't, they've got to keep on going on it and around it and around it and, until they do. Is that type of um, pressurized thinking, the right way of getting great ideas. The deliberateness of it, yes, is excellent. In other words, uh, uh, time for being creative, certain targets, and what I suggest to organizations, what I call a creative hit list, which could be on your in intranet, on the bulletin board. We need creative ideas in these areas, not only problem areas. That's a huge point because our whole idea is thinking is for problem solving. Not true. You may look at something which is excellent and say, that's excellent, but maybe we can change it. 1970, I was doing some work for Shell Oil, and I said, when you drill an oil well, you drill it straight down. I said, that's excellent, but why not drill it horizontally at a certain level? Nowadays, almost every oil well is drilled like that, because you get between three and six times as much oil, because you're going through the oil-bearing stratum, not just dipping through it. In fact, Stat Oil in Norway has one well going 10 kilometers horizontally. But for eight years, everyone was very happy, very satisfied, you just drill straight down. And many excellent ideas need challenging, saying, yes, that's excellent, but maybe there are other ways, better ways. That's interesting, because you're right, all the, a lot of the thinking goes on, lateral thinking goes on in problems, and everyone yeah. says, are you a good problem solver, as opposed no, to... No, problem solving is only one part. You can look at things which are not problems at all and say, yes, we do it this way, but maybe there's another way to do it. Yes. So I mean, it's rather like I wrote a book on simplicity some years ago, and I said, when you leave the United Kingdom, why do you need passport control? If you catch someone who's overstayed his or her visa, you arrest them, you haul them back to court, you spend a lot of money, then you deport them. If they're on the way out, just say goodbye. <laughs> and three months later, they abolish passport control. Now, I can't prove it's someone read my book, but chronologically, that's what happened. So it's a great point. So it's not just talking about creative thinking for problem solving, but also using creative thinking to enhance things that are already working. It depends what you mean by, you can have a brilliant idea, you can develop it further, develop full potential on that idea. That's one way of going beyond it. The other, of course, is change, changing the idea. Both have a value, yes. And when I'm talking about you know, creative, I'm not saying other sorts of thinking are not valid, they are. Market analysis and so on is perfectly valid. But this is additional. It's rather like when you're driving a car, you may have three forward gears and someone comes along and says, okay, we're going to give you a reverse gear. And you say, well, that's very useful. I, when I'm stuck in a situation, I can use it. A lot of people, I think, maybe confuse thinking creatively with just thinking differently. Is, is that the same thing? Many people believe that to be creative, you've got to wear a funny tie and so on. And in, in the art world, that may have value, but generally, creativity has to have value. It's like if someone says, doors are normally rectangular, I'm going to make a triangular door. Isn't that creative? And you say, yes, but what's the value? Unless there's a value, it is not creativity. In fact, I've invented another word for it. It is crazy-tivity. Just being different for the sake of being different is crazy-tivity. You mentioned in your book about the, the concept of a new ideas champion. You mentioned it was particularly well used in DuPont. So can you just tell us about what the role of a new ideas champion is and how it can be measured by the organization? Well, the story of the DuPont was there was a fellow there called David Tanner who came to a seminar I gave in Toronto, became very motivated. He invited me down to speak to DuPont on several occasions to all the different groups and so on. He essentially became the ideas champion within DuPont arranged for training, set targets for people. Now he's left DuPont, he's working on his own as a consultant. But he became the fellow who 
people went to with ideas, who would talk to people who had ideas and so on. You need someone who's specifically concerned with looking after ideas, listening to ideas, taking them further, putting the person with ideas in contact with the person who can do something about it, all that sort of thing. Because otherwise it just doesn't happen. Many of, very often people with ideas don't have the political skills to know who to talk to, how to present the idea and so on. You need someone on the side of the ideas person. To what extent has the CEO, do you think, got to back creativity for it to really work in an organisation? In my experience, unless the CEO shows an interest in creativity, it simply does not happen. It's very difficult to drive creativity up an organisation from some people in the middle or the bottom saying, we want to be creative for change. Unless the CEO makes it clear that creativity is an expectation, that people are expected to have ideas, are expected to find simpler ways of doing things, then nothing happens because people do what they're expected to do. And if they don't see being creative as part of the rules of the game, they're not going to bother. It's too much hassle and too risky. So the CEO is essential in setting that tone, setting that mode. New ideas are, are just that, they're new. So they're gonna, there's going to be an element of risk associated with them. So a lot of organisations may be thinking with the economy as it is, this is not the time to take on more risk. We're in enough risk as it is. So tell me about the role of creative thinking in an economic downturn that we're in now. Yeah, quite right. People often think of new ideas as being new products, new services, and that's risk, that's investment. You're not sure it's going to work. But new ideas are just as essential in simplification, cutting costs, doing things in a better way. And that's not risk and it's very helpful. So in times of recession you may need a lot of creativity. How do we simplify things? How do we cut costs? And so on. And that brings in the lateral thinking? Oh yes, absolutely. absolutely. Talking about that, do you have any, do you have any thoughts on what organisations should be doing more of in an economic recession? Well, not uh, specifically, but clearly they need to uh, see how to survive in the recession. Uh, and uh, to be fair, a little bit cynical, many of them will use the uh, fact or the imminence of recession as a good excuse to get rid of a lot of staff, which at other times might be difficult to do, but to say, no, a recession, we've got to lay off 5,000 people, and I'm sure that will happen. I'm not saying I encourage it, but that will happen. So rethinking the organisation happens, and doing things in a simpler way, important. And also looking for new alliances, perhaps, yes. Could you just give us an example of uh, any ideas using your lateral thinking that you come up with to solve any problems in the last few months? Yes, I was talking actually to someone, because I was speaking in South Africa at Soccer X in November, uh, which is, uh, I think it's 4,000 people from all over the world, 90 countries represented. And in soccer, when there's a draw, you have extra time. And if there's still a draw, you have a penalty shootout. Now, penalty shootout is a matter of luck or having one guy who can shoot penalties. So my idea is to reflect the whole game. So every time the goalkeeper touches the ball, that side gets minus a point. So at the end of the game, draw, extra time. If they're minus 50, they're minus 20, they win. Now, this encourages shooting at goal discourages passing back to the goalkeeper and it reflects the whole game. And I was talking to this fellow who runs soccer and he said yes, he, said, he likes that idea very much. Yes. Absolutely. Well, that's good to the next World Cup and maybe that will give England a chance. Well, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Bevo 